Hello, this is Castle of Castle Does. Today I'm going to sit back for a second and apologize that the last episode of Engine Wars didn't explain things in enough detail. I'm still learning how to best set up video content in a concise manner. It's been a, a bit of a growing process. So, with that said, I want to talk about something in greater detail that I haven't really had a chance to talk about. And that is, what exactly makes the Reflex 3D Engine Tools such a big deal? If you don't know what Reflex is, it's a modern take on a mod for Quake 3 Arena called Challenge Pro Mode Arena, or CPMA. Right now, to this day, I still consider Challenge Pro Mode Arena to be one of the most polished and focused competitive arena first person shooters in existence. While that's cool and all, and we could talk about the current state of arena shooters until we're blue in the face, and I know most of you probably have already written off arena shooters as that dead Game of Thrones character that died in the first season, kind of played an important role. The honest truth is, is that the arena first person shooter never really died. Its audience is smaller, yeah, but it's still roughly the same size as it was ages ago. It looks super fucking tiny now compared to everything else. It topped off and never really grew. George R. R. Martin, you can't touch this one. Okay, so with that said, why would I sit here and try to explain to all of you that Reflex is actually a pretty big deal? Why would I want to mention this when the last couple of episodes listed I listed the tool set as being one of the worst? I listed Reflex, Reflex as being above CryEngine because it has them lol. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't write this list out until just now because of my initial apology at the start of this episode. That thing where I mentioned that I wasn't being clear and concise enough? Yeah, that. Well, anyway, let's pretend I wrote this list out and we can now take note of the fact that Reflex is currently one of the worst brush editing tools when compared to Call of Duty Radiant, Hammer, GDK Radiant, and Unreal 4. Now I realize a lot of this is preference, people. Yeah, I get it. However, when you break down the concrete feature set, it's hard to write this off as an opinion piece. So, what are the cool doodads that make for the cutting-edge toys of tomorrow? Well, of course, there's the obvious, most important detail. The ability to seamlessly create and manipulate brushes, right? Duh. Well, as duh as that point is, believe it or not, most tools still get this shit either wrong or a little off. Call of Duty Radiant rules this shit with an iron fucking fist. With fists on it and a fist on top. Fist. The other major doodad to track is something called hierarchical instancing. Which makes me sound like a pirate with a stutter. I hate the word, but it's definitely fucking cutting edge. Hier hierarchical instancing is more than just another feature to make our lives easier. Hierarchical instancing is a feature that can change the entire process of how we build everything in the world. Okay, for those of you who don't know what instancing is, take two level designers or blocked in heavy deadline combat. Every second counts. Time is ticking, buddy. The goal is to build a large number of stairs for a skyscraper project. Guy one, let's call him Bob. Bob is doing okay. He's doing things the old-fashioned way, right? Bob is building one staircase, then he'll make a bunch of non-instanced copies, just like everybody did in the 90s. Soon he will have 100 floors. It's a pretty nice skyscraper. But wait a second, what's guy number two doing? Guy number two. Guy number two. Let's call him fucking awesome for. Or Fawesome for short. Fawesome is doing things the new way. He's using hierarchical instancing to create his stairs. So what makes that different? Fawesome is no slouch either. Once the first staircase is good to go, Fawesome creates a prefab instance of this first structure. So he makes the staircase, the first staircase, and then he saves it as a prefab. On top of that, he makes sure that the steps and the railings are separate prefab instances so other people can work on them while he makes sure to get everything in place. Hierarchical instancing means you can have more than one instance inside of an instance. 
as the trio of Fossum, they are not only getting everything in place faster, the overall quality of the stairs are better too. Bob never stood a chance. But wait, there's more. And he really doesn't stand a chance. At the very last second, the deadline has one additional task. The standard step height expected for every step has changed from 16 units to 8. Which happens. Not only that, but the railings need to all have a new material applied to them. And that happens very often too. Team Fossum are able to swap out and modify every instance of the stairs with a single action while Bob has pretty much start over from scratch. He has to go to every one of them and just delete them. Frost this sucks. Bob's Bob's ashes now reside in a tiny urn on my finger. I play violins the size two sometimes. So as you can see, hierarchical instancing is huge. It's a cornerstone feature that changes the entire design process in meaningful ways. For level designers, it can make us see the entire world differently. That's not a small deal. It can affect how we implement and share architectural structures as well as entities and everything in between. Seriously, everything. Don't want to have to make a super insane crazy in-editor front end to apply player collision to static meshes? Make an instance. Want to combine a gameplay? Want to combine gameplay objects to adhere to predefined standards? Make an instance. Want to want more freedom to build structures that are not uh, perfectly axial to 90 degree angles? Make it an instance. Now you can rotate that instance all you want. Want to collaborate with several level designers and artists at exactly the same time on the same level? Make more instances. Want to explore the potential of adding modifier variables to geometry details? Embark on the mostly unexplored murky waters that is exposed variables and hierarchical and hierarchical instancing. <laughs> Want to open a portal to hell that crashes your computer? Place an instance of the same instance within, within itself. <laughs> That's how the first Half-Life started. Hierarchical instancing opens the door for level designers to have a future, a feature that's just as important as prefabs in Unity and Unreal 4. Imagine a world where Unity doesn't have prefabs. Now erase that dreadful shit from your mind. Sorry for even bringing that up. So here we are back at square one talking about how badass something else other than reflex is. But that's just it here, people. I spent a decent chunk of time about talking about how this one super cool feature can have such a huge effect on the entire design process. Okay, so let's briefly talk about the core feature set of Reflex's editing tools. The first thing about Reflex Reflex's level design tool is that it's everything within a one three D view. That means it has no access to 2D orthographic viewports. Believe it or not, this is a weakness, as there is no harm in having 2D orthographic viewport. It's not as though these things were horrible limiting factors. Oh no, it was too confusing. I never really viewed them as being a bad thing. The problem in this case would be that it may be difficult for the devs to implement a split screen technology. And on that note, I have to say, yeah, the concerns are pretty damn valid on this front. I mean, split, split screen can take a bit to implement correctly after all, and who knows if you do it right or if it causes all kinds of other problems. But what if they just open multiple windows? <laughs> Fuck, now I got an alt tab to go between different viewports? Fuck that. What if I have to, what if I have other things open and then I gotta like tab between those two? Ugh. If I were to make a suggestion on this, I would combine how Doom Builder works with Radiant. And, you know, one key you press to swap between 2D and 3D views, and use Tab to go from top, side, and front while in 2D view. It's pretty simple. I think it could work just fine. However, with that said, there could be other ways to look at this problem. For example, let's take a look at how CryEngine seamlessly displays a 2D grid while in 3D space. What if the 2D grids could be displayed within 3D world space? I mean, that's something nobody's really doing, so it's worth mentioning this now. Reflex, Reflex's 3D single 3D viewport is very friendly to Oculus Rift and VR headsets. Nobody's really doing that. Am I being too futuristic? Good. <laughs>
good because if you don't like it, bang some rocks together, eight man. I only do future in this house. <laughs> so anyway, the second the second feature is solely missing from a lot of tool sets. It's technically new. It's not technically new. It's something that's been around for a little while. It's the ability to test your levels seamlessly. Like you just press Control J uh, G, and you just sort of drop into the world. Play from here in the right-click menu. Either a simple key combo or right-click menu ability to test this thing seamlessly is incredibly powerful. It's really, it really is. You can't deny it. This is a pretty big deal. Well, the reality is that this is a massive deal. It changes how we as level designers interface with the entire world. It's a, it's a big feature. It seems small, but when in practice, is actually really a fucking big deal. It allows us to add things, fix things, and make sure they function in mere seconds. I mean, seriously, it really does. I, I'm, if you get used to using it, I can't imagine going without. While you might be able to argue that you can build things more quickly in Radiant, you simply can't downplay the ability to seamlessly, seamlessly test your level no matter how hard you try. Which brings us to the last and final thing. What if I told you that you could take the power of Play and Editor as a feature and magnify its potency by 64 to 128 or more times depending on the server hardware? What if I told you that all the clients were able to work with out having to toil with source control, that's always annoying. Log on, log on and begin editing the world like a Minecraft server. Never lose work again if your computer catches fire, even if it just blows up. Never have to deal with people forgetting to check in their stuff. There's always that one guy. I'm talking about everything that comes with multiplayer in a professional development environment. A real-time social experience in game development. People testing their people testing your level while you're working on it and you're watching them seeing what others are doing and communicating with them in real time being able to help out without having to worry about overwriting of someone else's work oh no did I overwrite that file it fucking happens all the time so what's the problem this sounds amazing right wrong for some reason had all the newest most cutting-edge features to appear Multiplayer is commonly seen as a kind of a gimmick. Many times I, s I have seen people mention a fear that people will ruin each other's work. They're going to get in their each other's way. It happens a lot. Some, some have explained that they are afraid to let people see their work too, or too early and it's embarrassing. <gasps> Don't look at my work until I'm finished. To me, personally, the common argument against these kind of things sounds like a complete fucking madness. I mean, it's just giving in to childishness. But it's extremely common for me to hear this kind of shit when I bring it up. I do. And seriously, every single fucking time I'll talk to somebody and it'll be like, but what if the other guy like ruins my pillar? Seriously, you think multiplayer is a gimmick? Have you been paying attention to gaming in the last 20 years? How about the internet, huh? I don't know, but making games is a completely different is completely different from working on them, right? True, but level design is fucking level design. If I'm working on building a house in Minecraft, it's fucking level design. It may not feel like it, but it is. The base principle is that I'm building something for the express goal of accommodating gameplay. For anyone who has ever worked with other people to build something cool in Minecraft, you will be able to attest that it is not only more fun, it's a hell of a lot faster. On top of that, no matter how you slice it, real-time communication, interfacing, always beats out other methods. It really does. It just does. I don't even want to hear an argument otherwise. Being able to have someone right here is going to be more efficient. I'm worried that people will get in come in and ruin my work. Let's limit this discussion to, prof uh, to a professional environment where doing shit like this can result in disciplinary action. Well, that solves that. I feel embarrassed if people can see my work before it's done. I feel for you. I understand, but that's just you, and it's not a good argument to stagnate the building process for the rest of humanity. To top it off, level designers as a whole are not a vocal bunch. Fucking are not. 
Someone like me bitching endlessly about this shit is fucking rare. It is. It's pretty fucking rare. The normal not vocal level designer is someone who is handed a tool and learns to build something with it regardless of how shitty and antiquated it is. And usually it's pretty shitty and it's usually pretty antiquated. Designers almost never have a choice on the matter of how things should actually flow. A very large, a very huge portion of us only know maybe one or two editors too. I mean, we don't even have that huge variety. And they're usually pretty similar, like Radiant and Hammer. Oh no, the world's a difference. Level design tools are typically created by people who do not build levels and therefore usually have no idea what works best. You know, it's usually programmers. Getting feedback worth the shit from level designers about your new development tools, like pulling fucking teeth, it's very difficult. That's due to the fact that designers are stuck in a take a what we are given mindset which is very hard for us to break out of it really is the entire thing is a huge mind numbing loop of blind of the blind people leading submissive quiet people until planets align or mega textures in bankruptcy reflex is an editing tool that dares to move forward in a meaningful way while you might say unreal 4 and cryengine are giant cruise ships and massive open sea never to change vector reflex is a tiny brand new tugboat with unknown potential. They're saying, hey, this is a new angle on things that have just as much of an effect on development process as a hierarchical, hierarchical instancing and the ability to play test your stuff seamlessly. Here's an, idea that, here's an idea that will be extremely hard to ignore once people start to see it in action. Here is Minecraft for professionals. <sighs> I tip my hat to the reflex devs and say, keep it up, guys. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed. The evil that satisfies your grave.